Hi, my name is Thomas Nyström. I'm Bei Dong Liu. I'm a postdoc in Thomas Lab. We would like to welcome you to the Department of Cell and Molecular Biology at the University of Gothenburg and take you on a short tour of our data, which is published in this issue of Cell. Thomas Nyström and his colleagues are studying aging and rejuvenation using budding yeast as a model system. Yeast rejuvenation includes a segregation of damaged proteins where the aged mother cell retains most of the damage during the process of cytokinesis. This retination requires the gene SIR2, which is encoding a conserved protein shown to affect the rate of aging in different organisms. Well, we knew from before that the known silencing activities of SIR2 was not required for damage segregation. So in other words, SIR2 appears to have an unknown function. And the starting point of, of this work was to set out to find that function. And the way we set out to do so was to make a complete catalog of genes that interact with SIR2. And by doing so, we, find that, we found that SIR2 interacts with genes of the polarity machinery and genes involved in cytoskeletal functions. This is interesting first because it indicates that SIR2 itself might be involved in establishing proper polarity and secondly it puts the spotlight on the polarity machinery as the potential apparatus involved in segregating protein damage. And indeed, this was the case. When the researchers determined the ability of mother cells to retain protein aggregates, they found that cells lacking components or single components of the polarity machinery failed to do so. We also noticed that there are in fact two processes to keep daughters free of damage. One, as mentioned, is due to mother cells retaining aggregates, and the other by daughter cells moving aggregates back into the mother cell before completion of cytokinesis. Again, this process requires the polarity machinery and functional actin cables. If we now try to put this together by looking at the polarity machinery and the players involved in a more schematic way, we notice the following. First, the polarisome, which is localized at the daughter cell butt tip, is the center for actin nucleation, in which monomers of actin are inserted into the growing actin cables. For this, the polarisome needs native and properly folded monomers of actin, which are provided by the molecular chaperone CCT. We found that CCT is less efficient in cells lacking SIR2, which explains, at least in part, why SIR2 mutants display subtle defects in actin cytoskeletal function and polarity. Second, protein aggregates become tethered on the actin cables with the aid of the protein remodeling factor HSB104. Once attached to the cables, the movement of the aggregates is retrograde towards the mother cell due to actin nucleation at the polarisome region. In this actual footage of a real budding yeast, we can see how the machinery allows the daughter cell to clear itself from aggregates. So, is this a key process to rejuvenation? Well, we don't know. Uh, there are many factors that has been potential, or suggested to be potential factors involved in yeast aging. And protein aggregates and damaged proteins are just one of those. However, knowing that protein aggregates are key factors in many age-related disorders, such as neurodegenerative disorders, and knowing that it can play havoc with cellular performance and physiology, we think that this kind of segregation is important for the fitness of the offspring in yeast. It also raises another important question, and that is, did polarity in fact evolve to allow microbial systems to segregate their damage, and does this give them a selective advantage, essentially giving rise to a germline and a soma-like lineage even in microbial systems? Well, we'll leave you with these thoughts, and thank you for spending some time with us here at the University of Gothenburg.